Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, he is being introduced by Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland. He is speaking to university students across the country, this event being hosted by the University of Toronto. Let's listen now to Minister Freeland. Canada is there. We're there with weapons as well. And I want to say today, I want to say to President Zelensky, and I want to say to Vladimir Putin, who I think is probably listening to us as well, that for as long as it takes, Canada will be there for Ukraine. Ukraine is... <laughs> Ukraine, of course, is fighting for its own democracy, its own freedom, but we recognize that Ukraine is fighting for us too. Ukraine is fighting for all of the world's democracies, and that is why we will persist. We will not tire. We will be there. Now, we're here at a wonderful university, and so I'm going to conclude by just saying, sharing one thought about students and teachers. In 1991, I was the age of many of you here. Hard to believe I was ever that young, but it did happen. And I began my career then in that year when the Soviet Union collapsed and Ukraine became independent. And I remember that time so vividly. And it was a time when we, the Westerners, were Ukraine's teachers. Uh, a lot of Canadians were part of that effort, my own mother moved to Ukraine and worked on constitutional reform. But today the tables have turned. And today I really believe Ukraine is our teacher. And we, the rest of the world, are Ukraine's students. The world's democracies are, certainly. Like any good teacher, the people of Ukraine, in their heroic resistance, are actually teaching us things that we already knew. They're teaching us that you can stand up to someone bigger than you, even when the odds are stacked against you, if you believe in why you are fighting and if your cause is right and true. The people of Ukraine are teaching us today that democracy is worth fighting for. They're teaching us that the strength of a country doesn't come from how many people you can force to do your bidding, you can force and conscript. It comes from how many people of their own free will will stand up together for themselves. Now, these are lessons that are being taught at such a great, great cost by the people of Ukraine to all of us. And I think we in Canada need to think very hard about them and apply those lessons to ourselves, to our own constant effort to build, to improve our own democracy. One of Ukraine's first teachers was Taras Shochenko. He was a serf who had the incredible courage to say to his people, to fellow serfs, to people who were property, that they were actually human beings. And everyone who is Ukrainian Canadian listening to this will know the line from Taras Shochenko I'm about to quote. Everyone in Ukraine will too. Uchite se brate moji, dumaite chitaite. Study, my brothers, think and read. That was such a powerful, a revolutionary thought to say to serfs. And that's a reason that we all honor Taras Shochenko today. But today, Ukraine and the world has another brave, indeed revolutionary teacher. And that is President Volodymyr Zelensky. He is leading Ukraine. And in doing so, he is teaching the world and leading the world's democracies. Pane prezidente, mi nadzvyčajno horki, što vi tudi s nami sjohodni. Duže, duže vam djakuju. Slava Ukrajini.
Дуже дякую. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for so many warm words. I'm not sure that I deserve them, but I'm sure that our people deserve them. Thank you for this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. We are prepared to surprise the world, and I said those words in Toronto today was already referred to during the, during the conference dedicated to Ukrainian reforms three years ago. And who could have thought that uh, uh, the, there will be the big reform uh, in a different sense? Three years ago, when I was showing my vision, I was citing the team that you know very much. Toronto Raptors, NBA champions of 2019. This is when you win, when no one is expecting you to win. By bringing together and uniting, you do things that seem to be impossible. And this is how I was describing our goal, the goal of our country, the common goal of Ukrainians. Who could have thought that three years later, this would uh, sound totally different. Who could have thought how great the difference will be between those times then and now, between summer 2019 and summer 2022? Those were different times altogether. We have been looking forward for other victories. We have been building a different country, a country of transparent institutions, equal rules of the games, successful and free people. Today, the walls of our buildings are transparent, literally. They are destroyed by Russian missiles and bombs. The rules of the game do apply, but in a different meaning. These are now the rules of survival. Of course, they're equal, but they're not fair. They are cruel rigid and straightforward. You shoot at the front line, you help in the rear area. When you hear the air raid alarm, you go to the shelter. When you hear the noise of the enemy vehicles, you have to stand up and fight for your country. In 2019, I was talking about peace in the east of Ukraine. We talked about this with Christia and Prime Minister Trudeau the liberation of Donetsk, Lugansk, and the Crimea. We have been doing all it takes at all different platforms, using all possible diplomatic instruments. Ukraine sincerely was willing to make it happen, but the other side uh, wanted something very different, and we have seen what it was in the morning of the 24th of February. The peace, liberation, Donetsk and Lugansk in 22, now have Mariupol, Melitopol and dozens of other cities and villages that now have to be liberated as well. We have carried out at the Crimean platform and now we are resisting the Russian aggression not to have Mariupol platform, Kharkiv platform, Kherson platform, and dozens of other platforms to deoccupy the sovereign territories of Ukraine. Three years ago, our goal was a full-fledged reform of infrastructure. Ukraine launched the big construction program, and that was astonishing. And three years later, Russia started their special, so-called special operation. And we've created new bridges, schools, hospitals, stadiums, and Russia has been building bombs and missiles all this time in order to destroy all of that. Three years ago in Toronto, I was talking about the restoration of Donbass, and we have brought together hundreds of investors and companies from around the world there in Donbass, and we organized a forum in Mariupol Three years later, that city is almost non-existing, eradicated. In 2019, we were talking about the rebuilding in the east of Ukraine. 
based on the preliminary calculations, we required about $10 billion. At that time, that amount was shocking, it seemed. Three years later, it uh, times and times higher, and we now require hundreds of billion of dollars for restoration. And now, not only these, but we're talking about the south, the center, the north, the west of our country, which need to be rebuilt. We are divided by 7,000 kilometers in the ocean. We have a full understanding. We are separated with Russia by common border, but there is an abyss in between us in actions, in words, and most importantly, in values. In 2019, I was talking about my dream country, about a state where the highest value will be the human being. And in 2022, we are fighting against the aggressor whose highest value is weapon. My dream was a full Fledged digitalization of Ukraine, and we became the country in the smartphone. And the goal of Russia is a full fledged occupation of Ukraine. We became the country in the boots, the country in planes, in tanks, shelters, in uh, trenches. The way we work and live is now different, and not, but not our vision, our values. The, the path that we are going to our goal is now different, but the goal is not different. The teachers of our universities sometimes are teaching from the trenches, from the front line. Our teachers are recording their lessons and the task for at-home assignments for the school children during the air raids or in the uh, metro, subway, shelter. Sometimes they even marry in Zoom because there's no any, any other way around. And uh, three years ago, we were talking about the uh, capable local government. And three years later, we're talking about powerful territorial defense. Those were different times. Our goals have not changed. The only difference is in order to make it all happen now, we are fighting against the second strongest army of the world. We are fighting for our future, for our freedom, and for our land, just like 80 years ago during the Second World War. Today in Ukraine, we have a special day. We commemorate the heroic deed of uh, uh, pre former generations. This is a sad day of commemorating the victims of war that we celebrate on the 22nd of uh, June. On this same day in 1941, Nazis starting bombarding Kyiv in four o'clock in the morning. Those were different times, a different occupation, a different war. But our spirit, our longing for freedom and fight have not changed since. And uh, tw on the 24th of February, 2022, at four o'clock on that same time when Russian missiles flew into Ukraine, we stood up to defend our country. Today, we're, we are fighting for the future of our children and grandchildren, for the possibility and opportunity to build the new country. We already surprised the world. We've, we've come together to do the impossible, and we shall prevail, all, although against all the odds, for the free and democratic future. And those will be different times. What kind of times and how this will look like, we'll, we'll, we will see together. We will go there together. And I think this is something that we will discuss here today as well. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this meeting. And thank you, Canada, for your support. Slava Ukraini. Thank you very much.
Thank you, President Zelensky. We're deeply honoured you've taken time to speak with us and with university students. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Zelensky. We're Thank deeply you. honoured you've taken time to speak with us and with university students gathered across Canada, both in this room and in classrooms across the country. Indeed, we're joined by students from the University of Alberta, the University of Calgary, in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Dalhousie University, University of Manitoba. All right, we have University just been listening to Ukrainian President Island, Volodymyr University, Zelensky addressing University Canadian university students University's across the, the country. Water this water event water hosted water by the University of Toronto. The uh, president saying there that this is not, of course, the way he pictured things to go when he got into power in Ukraine. He wanted to modernize the country, but he said when it came to the war, when it comes to the war with Russia, he compares it to <laughs> the Toronto Raptors win three years ago. He said that you can win when no one expects you to. Again, this event being hosted by the University of Toronto.